Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. We're going to try a little bit different approach with this new series of videos. People are still not understanding some of the basic concepts that we need to have understood in physics. And I think this new approach will, will help us, you know, get that uh, understanding. Through example, I'm going to use a lot of graphics and photos that have been sent in from clients and stuff to help us with that process. So let's look at the room as a container of energy. And the room only sees energy. So that's the critical part we have to realize. I want you to put yourself in the position of the room. You're going to become the room, so to speak. So the room is going to see energy. and we're now going to be that energy. We're going to become the room and we're going to become the energy. And we're going to look at the interaction between those two systems. So we're going to turn ourselves into energy. Now, that energy can be different forms. It could be from a speaker. It could be from an instrument, drums, guitar. It could be from voice. How does the room see us? If the room only sees energy, how does the room see us? So here's how the room sees our energy. It breaks it up into two parts. Wave energy and ray energy. Wave energy, I want you to think like an ocean wave. A wave of lots of energy that oscillates in a cyclic manner throughout the room and then we have ray energy the ocean is wave energy and sunshine is ray energy so we have two types of energy we have wave and ray now wave energy is energy for purposes of discussion it's going to be below 100 hertz we're going to call that pressure then ray energy is energy above 100 hertz. We're going to call that reflections. So we have pressure and reflections, wave and wave, ray energy. Wave is pressure, ray is reflections. So those are the two main categories of energy that we're going to look at. And that's what you have to realize, because the room only sees energy. Wave energy is long, and it oscillates like an ocean wave through the room. And then ray energy is all about the reflection, the energy that bounces off the room surfaces. So we want to make sure that the ray energy, which is short and straight energy, versus the wave energy, which is long and oscillating, those are the categories that we have to think about. Those are the categories that we have to become. Let's take a look at this wavelength chart. We see that a 30 hertz wavelength is 38 foot long. A 40 hertz wavelength is 28 foot long. A 50 hertz wavelength is 23 foot long. I see a lot of rooms come across my desk and with the room forms, and we don't see dimensions ever. Very rarely, 23, 28, 38 foot. So when we don't see dimensions that are equal to the wavelength that we're dealing with, we're gonna have issues in the room. And those issues are gonna be divided into pressure and reflection. Now what happens when the long wavelengths of pressure below 100 hertz don't fit. Well, we know from past videos that those produce room modes. Room modes are in three sound fields, floor to ceiling, sidewall to sidewall, front to rear wall. When room modes occur, they exhibit two characteristics. They exaggerate energy or sound at that particular octave band or frequency, or they eliminate it altogether. With room modes, there's very little in the middle. It's either too much 
or not enough or not any. So the bottom line is it's a form of distortion. And our goal is to minimize distortion so we improve resolution. Look at this reflection graphic. We know in two-channel audio that the direct energy from our speakers is the energy that's straight line. Shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So the straight line energy that comes from our speakers does not contain reflected energy or room sound. So that's the desired energy we want to reach our ear first. The reflected energy supports, in a way, the direct energy. It can also interfere with it. If we get too much time signature variation in the reflected energy versus the direct, we have distortion. So the goal is to balance both pressure and reflection in a room. That's our goal. And we're going to do another video on the treatment side of it. How do we do that? And show you the differences in the two forms of treatment that are required for pressure and reflection. But for purposes of this discussion, I want you to realize that the room sees energy. And most of the energy that it sees is not favorable. It's not favorable to the dimensions of the room, especially on the pressure side. It's not favorable to the dimensions of the room on the reflection side. So that's what the room sees. That's how the room sees the energy we put in it. And then it's going to react accordingly to that. It's going to produce room modes with low frequency pressure that doesn't fit. It's going to produce time signature delays in the reflection, which interferes with the direct energy. So pressure, reflection, those are the two areas that we have to focus on. That's our goal. So we're going to look at this picture here of speakers in the corners of rooms. Now, since the room only sees pressure and reflection, what kind of pressure does this setup produce? It has speakers in the corners. Do you think that's going to be favorable to pressure? Of course not. Do you think that setup is going to be favorable to reflections? I don't see how when the wall is six to eight inches away from the speaker. How are we going to get a balanced energy situation there? Okay, let's look at this next picture. We have a large glass window on the right side, and we also have speakers in the corners. So this room exhibits both pressure and reflection issues. Glass is a horrible surface to have in any critical listening environment. It actually produces frequency aberrations from 800 to 2,000 cycles. So glass is horrible. We don't want that. A good way to think about materials in your critical listening rooms is that sound takes on the characteristics of the surface areas that it strikes. If it strikes glass, you get glass sound. If it strikes plastic, you get plastic sound. Now, that's not a very scientific way of looking at it, but I think you get the idea. So you have to be very careful with the materials that you're putting in the room. All right, so let's take a look at this next picture. We have a speaker right next to a glass window. And the first reflection point is a bookshelf. So if your pressure that radiates all the way around the speaker and enters the bookshelf, what kind of reaction is the bookshelf going to give us? What kind of reaction to reflections is the glass window going to give us? So if you put yourself in the position of the room and you act as the energy source, you wouldn't want to be put in a corner. You wouldn't want to be put next to a bookshelf, right? These are all obstructions to resolution. They're getting in the way of the 
a solution that we're trying to achieve. So let's take a, another look at another picture here. Speakers in the corner with a screen in the middle. So here's another example of both pressure and reflections. Both problem, problems right off the bat. Let's look at this next picture. There's so much clutter in this picture that if you are a reflection, you're going to be a reflection off many, many obstacles. It's like death by a thousand cuts. Maybe one piece of furniture or this or that is not going to create that much of an audible difference. But when you get this much clutter between objects in the room, you get so many spurious reflections, it's going to be difficult to achieve resolution. This is why we are not proponents of equipment racks. I get it. The equipment needs to go in certain locations to cut down on cable lengths due to high costs. I guess some of these cables are made of diamonds. I don't know, but the prices are unbelievably high. So we want to minimize the length, especially with analog cables, speaker cables. But you can't have a lot of clutter here, and you can't have a lot of objects producing reflection. Because remember, it's a balance between direct and reflected energy. That's our goal. So this is going to be our new format approach to videos, trying to get people to understand more through example. And I hope that uh, this new format helps. Let us know uh, what your thoughts are, and we'll move forward with this. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.